high yield dividend stocks tend to attract the masses of dividend investors thanks to what appears to be ultimately a bigger payoff. But as we're about to find out, high dividend stocks shouldn't be every investor's go-to, especially if you're looking to really achieve financial freedom much earlier. However, should high dividend stocks be suitable for you, I have a list of dividend stocks to put on your radar today if they're not already in your dividend portfolio. So if you're anything like me, you've taken a liking to dividend stocks for their safety and reliability, but also because they pay out a dividend, which we all classify as passive income. And obviously, the higher the dividend yield, the more money you're ultimately going to receive in the form of a dividend. So why wouldn't we all young and old just be loading up on these high yielding dividend stocks? Well, in short, they're a trap for some of us while ideal for the other some of us. You see, if you're younger, say in your 20s, 30s, or even in your 40s to arguably your 50s, you have the benefit of time on your side as an investor, and you're going to want to maximize on that time by investing into more growth oriented stocks, whether that's a stock that doesn't pay a dividend or a dividend growth stock. Ultimately, you're going going to find those stocks to be more beneficial. The reason being comes down to total return, which is the actual rate of return on an investment or pool of investments over a given period of time and includes interest, capital gains, dividend, and any special distributions. Moreover, with a smaller yet growing dividend, there's a focus on capital appreciation, but also a growing dividend, which just over the span of time provides you with more money versus a higher yielding dividend stock whose capital appreciation isn't quite there, thus limiting your your upside entirely. However, there is a certain breed of investor who should absolutely be focused on higher yielding stocks, and that's the near retiree or the investor already enjoying the pasture of retirement. These investors may need the income and they may need that income now or just can't afford to take all the risks that us younger investors can. So if you're smart, it's not a trivial decision here. The immediate gratification of high yield income may be tempting, but there's only one component here to consider, and that's total return, as it comes down to capital appreciation that has delivered most of the market's return over the span of time, as you'll see now. While their yields may be lower, companies like those in the S&P 500 Dividend Aristocrats Index generally have a better balance of growth and income, and as a result, they have provided investors with greater total returns over the span of time compared to our Dow Jones Select Dividend stocks. By this point, I hope I have successfully sent many of the younger investors out there to a more suitable video for them. But now I want to dive into the high dividend stocks on today's list that are strong investments for those in need of income now, with the first dividend stock being Verizon, ticker symbol VZ, which is the world's second largest telecommunications company by revenue, and its mobile network is actually the largest wireless carrier within the United States. So in other words, a very safe industry leader that is simply focused on maintaining their dominance and continuing just to provide the same old service that they have been for years. And that's unlikely really to change anytime soon. So therefore, if we click into the stock chart, we're gonna see that we have a chart with spurts of growth, but overall just very consistent and dependent on our macro environment. Yet right now, it's trading for almost the same share price as it was back in the early 2000s. But now scrolling down, we're gonna see a very healthy investment with revenue that consistently pours in on an annual basis and a balance sheet. Well, we could see that assets just continue to pull ahead of liabilities year over year, and again, without much growth, but likely just being a very consistent and predictable investment opportunity for us all without much industry disruption. Now, an investment like this allows us all to enjoy a higher stable dividend. Clicking into Simply Safe Dividends, we're going to see that Verizon scores a safe score here of a 70 while yielding a whopping 6.3% dividend yield. And as for the payout ratio, it's actually quite low for the industry coming in at just 58%, along with a solid dividend streak here for the last 40 years. Of course, this all means a lower growth rate all in all, and we're going to see that is the case, but I'm going to continue to scroll down here so you can at least see that as of right now, it's reasonably valued as of this video per the Simply Safe Dividends team. Now, the next high yielding dividend stock I want to talk about may surprise you, but it's Realty Income, ticker symbol O, which is a real estate investment trust. Matter of fact, the largest of its kind in terms of net lease solutions and coming in with a massive portfolio of over 15,000 properties that span across the US as well as outside of the United States. The key here is 
that realize that really income is actually focused on leasing their properties out to community staples like Walmart, Home Depot, CVS, and 7-Eleven, and they alike to generate lease terms over a decade's worth of time, meaning realty income becomes a very lucrative, stable investment for those in need of cash flow. And if we are to click into the stock chart, I want you to take note that we actually see quite a bit of growth over realty income's lifespan, as that is the ramp up period for their portfolio. But more recently today, it's been just a stable player. Of course, that is also because interest rates have been higher, limiting their ability to really use debt to their advantage. But the big picture question here is how fast they're going to be able to continue to grow their empire might be a bit slower but scrolling down we do see a very healthy looking income statement with their net revenue actually growing year over year ultimately though we have a balance sheet that is squeaky clean with assets trumping liabilities year over year while growing as well coming in at over 57 billion dollars in 2023 alone but being here for the cash flow and dividends we're going to discover realty income comes in with a safety score of an 80 so better than verizon and a whopping yield at 5.12 percent worth of a dividend yield scrolling down a pay it ratio at 75% along with a solid dividend growth streak for the last 55 years and a decent growth rate there of 5% year over year. Now, I do want you to take note of the fact that it is a non-qualified investment opportunity, meaning it is taxed at ordinary income. But if you're still interested, we are seeing that the stock is reasonably valued right now, according to Simply Safe. Of course, really income as a REIT is a monthly paying dividend stock. If you need that cash flow, it's a great pick. But while on the topic of a monthly paying stock, we're also going to talk about Main Street Capital, ticker symbol MAIN, which is a BDC or business development company for those of you unfamiliar with the terminology. But ultimately, BDCs provide debt and equity capital to relatively small, high leverage companies that can't access the same financing from banks as larger companies. So it could be seen as a bit riskier, but usually BDCs gift investors with higher distributions. Either way, popping open the stock chart, I want to go ahead and take a look at Main Street Capital's stock trajectory here. It's very similar to Realty Income with an initial initial ramp up period, but really stabilized over time while just continuing to grow quite nominally for $51 per share up from $13 per share back in 08. And scrolling down, we see a healthy income statement with revenue flowing in on a regular basis while their balance sheet remains quite healthy with assets that come in over the last couple of years sitting just north of $4 billion while liabilities remain at or under $2 billion, which all leads us to once again, another rock solid high dividend stock opportunity. And if we click into Simply Save, it rates a 62 in terms of safety, thanks to the lending aspect of their business, but it gives shareholders with a 5.74% dividend yield. Now, another positive here is just the payout is coming in lower than its peers at 69%, while it maintains a 16-year dividend streak. If we continue to scroll down here, we're going to get a smaller growth rate of just 4% in terms of the dividend, and we have another non-qualified dividend stock on our hands, so just be aware of that for tax purposes. And of course, with Main Street Capital right now, it is considered overvalued by Simply Safe. Now, investors... There's three out of the six high yielding dividend stocks I wanted to discuss with you today. Before I get to the next three, I want to ask you for your help in growing this channel, especially as I see 70% of you continue to tune in, but aren't actually subscribed. So with that, join me now by subscribing. And while you're at it, if you're actually getting value from this video and you want to see more videos on high yielding dividend stocks, tap on that thumbs up button to let me know. With that, we'll jump right back into it with Lyondell Bissell Industries, ticker symbol LYB, which is a chemical company that likely flies underneath all of our radars as we really don't think about on the day-to-day -day basis just how much chemicals play a role in our everyday lives. But the point is, Lyondell's products are a necessity, which means that we have a lot of consistency when it comes to an investment into the company. Pulling up their stock chart here, we could see they're coming in strong between $90 and $100 per share. And if we scroll down, we're going to get revenue that is growing year over year as well, along with a very clean balance sheet with assets that just continue to top liabilities year over year, notching up by a billion in each year, with 2023 being their strongest year yet, topping $37 billion in terms of assets, which allows us to click right over to Simply Safe Dividends and see a safety score coming in a bit lower there at 51. So not as safe as our other mentions today, but still a solid dividend yield coming in at 5.71%. Now scrolling down, we're going to discover a 68% payout ratio, which makes this stock a little bit less safe than some of its peers. However, it is maintaining an 11-year dividend streak as of this video and a surprising growth rate coming in at 9%. Percent as per Simply Safe. Now it is looking reasonably valued as well as we speak. But if you really want to get your hands on a high paying dividend stock with plenty of security, just given the nature of their addictive product, I want you to look into Philip Morris, ticker symbol PM, a tobacco company which really says everything you need to know about creating a moat worthy investment. After all, it was Warren Buffett.
Buffett who shared that it costs a penny to make, sell it for a dollar, it's addictive, and there's a fantastic brand loyalty behind it. Meaning tobacco companies have served investors well for decades, and in my opinion, are likely going to continue to do so. Which is why we can click into Philip Morris's stock chart to see, again, an initial ramp up period, a growth spurt of appreciation before Philip Morris really then leveled out trading sideways if you're looking at it from a bird's eye view. Now scrolling down here, we're going to discover again a very consistent revenue generating machine of their very addictive products, but actually now something I want to raise as a red flag and something I particularly don't like when it comes to the balance sheet, which is liabilities that outweigh debts. From an investor standpoint, this is not a great sign, but I will say this, the market for cigarettes is transforming into e-cigarettes, and despite the government attempts to eliminate smoking for health purposes for all of us, well, I'd say mission failed, at least for now. So clicking into Simply Safe Dividends, we're going to see a solid safety score coming in at 64, a dividend yield at 4.5%, scrolling down an 85% payout ratio with a 15-year dividend streak, so not too shabby there. Nominal growth rate coming in at 4%. However, the stock in and of itself right now is looking overvalued. Next up, arguably the most interesting pick, we have Ennis, ticker symbol EBF, which was founded back as a community newspaper in Ennis, Texas in 1909. Ennis has grown to ultimately become the largest provider of business forms, labels, tags, envelopes, and presentation folders to independent distributors within the United States. Now, just given print-based products have been on the decline for decades as electronic distribution of documents has replaced a once boom booming paper full business environment, Ennis has actually successfully navigated all of these challenges by playing the role of consolidator and acquiring smaller rivals to ensure it always offers the industry's widest variety of products. I want you to think along the likes of Amazon here. Either way, stability, reliability, and predictability are three words that come to mind when I think about Ennis. We're going to see that they trade between $15 and $20 per share. They've been doing that for years now, yet scroll down to see the income statement illuminating the healthy income flows here and a balance sheet to go along with it with 2024 actually being quite a strong year with nearly 400 million in assets with less than 50 million in liabilities however we are here for the dividends with ennis so let's click into simply safe dividends to get a safety score of a 61 a dividend yield coming in at 4.89 percent along with a payout ratio coming in at 63 percent while maintaining a strong 50-year dividend streak now a very slow dividend growth rate there at just two percent year over year for the last 20 years but a reasonably valued stock right now as as per Simply Safe Dividends. Now, investors, I personally would love to know which high dividend stocks you're focusing on or invested into have within your portfolio. So comment down below and of course, let me know where you're at in your journey if you're younger or if you're nearing retirement. Be sure to tune in right here to learn some of the investment mistakes I made early on so you can totally avoid them. Of course, before you click over there, be sure you're subscribed to the channel and I'll catch you there.